Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is March 18th, 2017. And today we have Jim Charles, who has joined us again to come and channel. Hello, Jim. Hello. How are you? I hope everybody's doing well today. Me too. It's so good to have you back here, Jim. As always, um, we're looking forward to hearing uh, the messages that you pull through for the highest greatest good. And I want to apologize to everybody today. We had some major technical difficulties and for some reason it was like broken for me to start this broadcast on the Human Colony TV side. So we had to move or on the Hukalo 2 side. So we had to move over here to the Human Colony TV. Um, we only have 10 people available in this hangout this morning. We apologize to everyone who um, is not able to join, but I'm glad this was still able to happen. Um, so you can still ask your questions on the YouTube live chat as well as um, in our little chat box here. So um, since we're getting started late, I am going to bypass some stuff here. Uh, just quickly mention, please go to humancolony.org to stay up to date on our events and to check out what we have going on. Uh, we do have a calendar on there that we do put our events coming up. And um, we are always looking for new and upcoming channelers and um, others who are wanting to get the messages out for the highest, greatest good. Um, we're working on a few projects. I know there's a project where we are transcribing channelings um, into a written format. So please email max at humancolony.org if you'd like to get involved in that. And also we are looking for more people to do this job of helping to host um, pushing buttons, making sure the webinars go smoothly. If you are willing to help out with that, it's all volunteer, but um, we do need the assistance. So please let, let us know, max at humancolony.org, email him, um, and we will get you trained up so that we can uh, have some more hands on deck here. So uh, Jim, is there anything you wanted to announce before we get started? Uh, yes. Um, well, eventually we want to make some of the positions pay positions on a human colony because people have really dedicated their time such as you Bree, and uh others uh we want to make it so that we can compensate people online for their work and we have been doing that with uh certain people that we hired out to do certain things like edit and things of that nature for the books the other thing that I wanted to say was, uh, remember that we have just gone through a time change here in New York State. Now I know that messes me up with a lot of the European areas. It changes it my time by an hour. So right now I'm working day to day to make sure that everybody, I, I'm getting to everybody at the right time. But sometimes I'm not sure where you are. So if you are in Europe, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, China, Japan, Malaysia, those places, please let me know that you're there so that I can, or in Europe of any place, all the places. Um, if you are, are anywhere like that, let me know so that I can adjust my schedule because it will be an hour difference. And I'll have to start an hour later or, later than what I usually would. And that means that I will have to rearrange my schedule. So, um, <laughs> so uh, the other thing is we have uh, three people here today, Angela, Carolyn, and Ray. And uh, also we are continuing to work on the book. And, and yes, we would like as many volunteers as possible to help us uh, some of the videos if that's something that you would uh, be one of your highest excitements or something that you really want to do so just let us know let Max know more than anybody else he would be able to de delve out the information and the the uh, things that need transcribed yeah also, exactly yep so you can email Max at humancolony.org oh sorry Jim and also I would like to ask if there's anybody you would want me to channel today or any requests for those that you want to come ish. in because ish okay anybody else Buddha. 
Buddha, okay. Oh, yeah, we need Buddha to come back eventually. Go ahead. Uh, maybe someone that can give us any update on the current state of affairs of the of the planet Earth, because there seems okay. to be a lot going on. Yes, okay. A uh, hollow Earth being. A hollow Earth being, okay. Ra. Ra, okay. Horus. Horus? Yes. Okay. Sekhmet. Sekhmet. All these Egyptians. Both. <laughs> huh? Both. No. But I really want to talk to them. All right. Oh, those are all <laughs> Awesome. Egyptians. We got some uh, requests in there. Cool. Anubis. 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 Those are a lot of Egyptian requests today. Yes, okay. Um, all right. All right. Very good. And... Um, a couple of blessings to start with. Um, I haven't gotten anyone lined up for blessings. Um, I wanted to skip right in quick. Is there anyone who is willing? Uh, just one blessing would be good. If I could. Okay, okay Steve. Go ahead. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Jim and all. There is great life within the life of all. And as it expands, you will see that it overflows into the spirit. So do not be overwhelmed in the flesh by that which the spirit wants to give. Accept it and move into the realms of unexpected delight and information. Today will be one of those days of light and information and things that will be brought from beyond thank you thank you steve and jim that was beautiful absolutely beautiful wonderful wow. okay well what a good way to raise the vibrations and i with that i think we're ready to get started so let's see who comes through today jim for the highest grades right. good thank you i um I figured we had a delay because somebody had to come from the other side of the galaxy to get here or something. Um, that's possible. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> we'll yeah, see who sure. comes. I will, good, I will do a meditation now and then we will uh, see who comes. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, I am Takur. I've just come to update you on some of the new things about the Earth that you should know. Of course, you know about the weather and the different things that are happening with that, and the many earthquakes that are happening, and not so much volcanic reactions, but more seismic. But this will affect the volcanoes on your planet. Right now, there are great weather that are happening and we are helping to make them non-deadly however they may be seemingly tragic in the sense not tragic but seemingly harsh because they are so much but they are believe it or not they have been uh, taken down a couple notches so that they would not be deadly Kiaquat, yes there are those energies that are still uh, ramping up around the earth, Mother Gaia is dealing with many of these energies and is trying to keep them in line. They are settling down little by little, but there are still many people that are very disturbed by these energies and by this uh, changes in 
the energy fields from the center of the galaxy, the fourth dimensional energy cloud, uh, the new energies from 2014, and, and many of those things. So hang in there. It will get better. And they will calm down, I promise you. The thing is, the worldview has changed and can sit, continues to change. Though other countries are looking at amazement in some ways at how the United States has changed in the last several months. And it, it brings them a great deal of concern. But it also brings them a great deal of hope because they see that it is disrupting the, the American people in such a way that they might be able to take advantage of it. So be aware of this. Be aware that all things will uh, happen as they are supposed to, and that it is a time of chance, even though it may not seem so. Sometimes it, you need to be shaken up for things to happen the way they should. So therefore, just take it as a challenge and take it as a change in energy for the entire world. It needs to change for it to be a more positive place. It may not seem like a positive change at the moment, but hopefully it will move in the direction that it should, and we see that it is so far. Are there any questions about that? Hi, Tikur, thank you so much for coming. Yes, we do have a question. Um, few people were asking when the next government meetings are scheduled for the ones with uh, the end of May. <laughs> they are scheduled for the end of May and probably will go into the 1st of June. We are thinking the 28th of May and going into probably June 1st uh, or 2nd even. We'll see. Okay. Interesting. Um, Wow. Well, that's uh, that's a lot. Thank you for the updates on um, everything that's going on. Is there anything in terms of the progress with, let's say, the light and dark forces, for lack of a better term? Um, can we get any update on kind of how things are progressing? Yes, of course, the light and dark forces uh, continue to oppose one another and but the light is getting stronger and, and it's becoming more prevalent in some areas now there are certain areas of your planet where it gets darker of course but on in the front of the United States it is in great pockets that there is great deal of light and a great deal of darkness which is different than any other country countries are either more dark or more light Whereas the United States in your uh, realm has great areas of darkness and great areas of light. We are monitoring this and seeing that the ascension is moving in great and wonderful ways in some areas around the world. And things are becoming more popular with metaphysics and things are becoming less secretive about metaphysical developments and the use of metaphysical tools to gain access to logic and information for the future. Yes, it's very exciting. I'm seeing that really strongly in my own personal life. So um, awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, it's cool to hear. Um, how are the colonies doing? Could we get an update on all that stuff? The colonies are doing fine. Not as many people are volunteering to go to the colonies at this time because they do not remember everything. However, the ones that do have memory of uh, being on the colonies do like to be there and do like to bring back some information. We are working on some technology that might bring out uh, subconsciously the information that is stored from the colonies in each individual. We are not making any promises because we have made promises in the past that have not we have not been able to keep, although that was a surprise to us. 
we are still not going to make any promises for the future because everything is experimental once again. But we are looking into that would stimulate the subconscious, bring it into the consciousness and make you more aware of your experiences in the astral. That's fascinating. So that would be experiences across the board, not just the colonies that I'm assuming, right? That is correct. Wow. Well, I'm uh, hoping to hear more good news on that front because that is very cool. Um, so I wonder we then. Have, we do have technology for other species that works in this way, but it has to be adapted to humanity in a way that it's not harmful to their your systems. And therefore, that is what the holdup is is that humans are very delicate and have very many different kinds of seedings within them. And so each person may react differently to this technology. We have to find a way that it reacts the same with everyone. It can be adjusted, but only to a small degree, and that would not uh, take in every person on the planet. Okay. Wow. That's so fascinating. Um, cool. Well, looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, w there are some more, like Wendy, um, Languages of Lights, Wendy was asking if there's any updates on um, w the work we're doing, not only with the colonies, but also on ERA and Maya and Pin Pinela. Is it Pinela? Panera. 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 Panera with the hybrid children. Those are the three hybrid children pl planets, correct? Yes. <laughs> they are doing well. More, more are being brought to these places and are being... And the building of these places are continuing to expand. They are in a good place. There is many very happy families. Uh, it's actually Palana. I'm sorry, not Panera. Palana. There are different pronunciations within the alien cultures, but Palana would be the human pronunciation. Palana. Okay, beautiful. Palana, correct. Okay. I brought Panera out of this brain because it is a place to eat. Yes, we have soup. <laughs> um, but the actual name of the planet is Palana. I, I see. So those are the main three um, planets for hybrid children and some well, like plus there are many ships that have hybridization on them. And there are many areas on, on some of the larger ships where the ships, maybe 30% of the ship is dedicated to hybridization programs. Oh, interesting. There are about six of these ships, yes. Hmm, okay. Um, I'm going to go off on a limb here and just random question. Is there some cute or interesting or amazing story that you could share with us about uh, hybrid children, somebody recently experienced, specifically maybe somebody um, in the well, colonies. There was a very, very small hybrid child on Palana. Well, era Palana, they've moved this child around because it was so popular. And it was very small, and many people like to hold it. And it was very cute. It had many it had human features, but it was also very tiny, and many people wanted to be around this, this particular child. It had very positive and beautiful energy as well. And so it was one of the most popular hybrid children that we ever had because it was very, very tiny and had great energy, very positive energy. It's now much larger, of course, but it still remains one of the most popular children, and it is on Polana right now with its hybrid family. What kind of a hybrid is that child? I, I believe it's a Uyil, but 
there are several uh, hybrids in it which made it small. I'm not sure why, but it, there was more than one hybridization within the, within the child. I would have to check with Sengi. It looks like it does have Yuyil, Pleiadian, and Lirin, but I am not exactly sure. I've been hearing many different stories about this child. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> also, the parents of the children um, have been visiting a lot, and it is always beautiful to have them give information to their families of their child of how they want them to be brought up, what they want them their human name to be, what they uh, what they desire them to be taught, and things of this nature. It is a wonderful. Uh, interaction and there is much of that going on as well. There are many s wonderful stories that can be told but they are from individual families and I would not want to share anything that someone might find personal. I understand that makes sense. That's so cool though. I have heard some cool things too because it sounds like not only people are connecting in the astral with their children, but also here in this realm, um, as people are continuing to awaken, I've heard some true. cool stories. Um, yes. Like a, a Slava raven has many stories as well. Slava from, from Russia yes. has some stories about his children and how they are developing. And there's many others that take great interest in their children, and it is a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, could you explain, I'm actually curious, and we'll move forward from here, um, how they go about, because I've heard that the, the hybrid children specifically communicate with us, especially in nature, so through the plants, through the wildlife. Um, can you explain well, kind of how would, that works? Yes, it's energetically. You see, you cannot see them in the dimension that they're in, so they will perhaps put energy in flowers or trees or birds or some other uh, area of nature where you will be attracted to that particular energy of that plant or animal and then you will uh, find that there is a great attraction, a great love of that particular energy that you are feeling and it is the energy of your hybrid child. Wow, that's so fascinating. I mean, I've even seen a video of a raven, a bird, um, clearly doing something out of the ordinary, connecting with, it was the, like the hybrid children who came through, connecting with yes, um, the parent. They will, and, so and they do not always come through the most cute right. animals because <laughs> it is that they do not see beauty the same way as you do. And the, a raven or a wild cat or something that you might find frightening, they find beautiful and uh, very energetic and want to share their love through that particular uh, animal or plant. Yeah, it's so interesting how all of this stuff works. <laughs> and we had a uh, Liney here um, on the YouTube live chat. Liney was asking if there is one, I think she means a planet called Al Alula. Yes. For hybrid children? Alula? It is, it's not considered a hybrid uh, planet yet. There are some children there, but uh, there it is not considered a hybrid children planet as of yet. Oh. It is just in its beginnings as far as understanding and building and things of this nature, the hybrid societies. But they do have uh, mostly just just Pleiadian hybrid children there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, well, hey, kudos to Liney. Um, Slava had actually been, he popped into the YouTube live chat. He said, I'm curious about the visitations to the colonies and in particular visitations to our children. I believe there's some time periods for us to visit the colonies. What about visiting our children? Can we visit them at any time or only specific periods of time? Well, that is up to you. If, if you are available at the times they are available, you can go at any time. There are only certain portions of the day that might not be, uh, they might not be available during 
perhaps training periods or things of this nature because most of Slava's children are in classes and uh, do some very intense training, but they love it. But that would be the only time, or when they're asleep, you might not want to visit them and disturb them. But many times uh, parents do visit while their children are asleep and it does not disturb them, but sometimes it does. So those are the only two times that I can think of that you might not want to visit your child. During meal times, it does not matter because they will, they do not eat the same way as humans eat. So it's a very short period of time for the, the lunch period, the dinner period, or whatever uh, they are taking in energy. They are, they are not long periods of time and they can still socialize during these times. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, and Slava um, was also asking if you're able to tell him when was the last time he visited his kids and if it's not a secret, what he typically does there with them. Oh, oh of course. Um, he visit his children are in a couple different places because he has more than, he has several children. Uh, and um, visits the most is his first, very first child and she is on ERA, and she is a video technologist, and she works with video technologies in many different forms, holographic as well as on, uh, I do not know the terminologies that are used at this time, but she uses um, the holographic materials, and. And uh, also very uh, stable, uh, advanced technology with uh, video uh, programming. So she is uh, very, very good. She also works with um, some forms of psychology. And she's interested in that as well. She has many different interests and is always uh, doing something amazing, I think. And yes, you do visit uh, quite often. Uh, of all the the parents, I think Slava is one of the ones that visits most often. Uh, probably once or twice a week, he goes to at least one of his children, and or maybe more, and visits with them. And and there is one that comes to the colonies, and he likes to visit uh, him on the, the colonies. So therefore, it is a beautiful thing. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you, Takur. Um, oh. His child that works in the colonies is working with Nina, and she is the the leader of the colony. She's the one that is in charge of the colonies. Oh, is that and, Max's daughter, Nina? Yes, yes. And um, she is in charge of uh, the colonies, and she is training uh, his son to work in the colonies and be a leader there as well. Fascinating. That's so cool. Um, and actually, this is this is kind of related not only to this to what we were talking about earlier. Somebody on the YouTube live chat, Javo, was asking um, about disclosure in particular. He said, um, "Is there any update on how that's developing? Are we heading into partial or full disclosure?" There is some disclosure happening, but it's very soft at this time. It will happen. It will come gradually and in sections, but disclosure will come. And it will take a few years for it to be full disclosure, but it will happen in this place and that place. And there will be uh, many that are going to experience uh, that it is coming to them. The information is already there, but it is just not spoken by the right people yet. Okay, I see. Um, uh, I'm assuming that uh, Hollow Earth and Inner Earth and Agartha stuff will probably be coming out a lot. Well, they sooner. are really the Agarthans would be the first to come out from underneath of the subterranean levels that they uh, live in at this time. They are thinking about coming out within the next couple years or within actually the next year, they would like to have some exposure 
but they do not want to it to be what would be considered first contact because this is their planet so they are not a considered off-world people they consider themselves part of this world and that you live in and part of here because they they study human cultures and they know what is going on in humanity so when they do arrive and come out of seclusion they will know all about the different things that humans do and be able to communicate in a very uh, specific way to let people know that they are friendly and that they are from another world originally. Yes, looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be very exciting as this continues. So thanks to Kerr You're for welcome. <laughs> all these cool updates. We have more questions. Um, Steve Helms was asking what he has been up to recently on the colonies. You have been in uh, Colony 2 for exercise, uh, diet, and nourishment, and, and to bring you things. You wanted to, you were interested in some of the, uh, in teaching some of these things as well. Also, you were in Colony 1 for the telepathic and languages, and Colony 6 for healing. You, you are a healer, and you like to receive it as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. He says thank you to Kerr. Uh, next, we have a question from Krellick. Are you able to unmute? Yes. Hello. Hello to Kerr. I can hear you. Continue. I wanted to ask about uh, ships when they enter dimensional travel uh, within a planet's atmosphere. Um, do the do the pilots of the ships have to be careful so that they don't accidentally like manifest into another building? No, the coordinates for their trip are mapped out so that they will not uh, be. You see, we have an an understanding of third dimension and can sense it. You see, with technology third dimension is able to be sensed quite easily and avoided and manifesting. So therefore, coming into atmospheres, uh, that is the tricky part. Not that we would manifest in buildings, but the changes of atmospheres and the different kinds of uh, molecules that are in the atmosphere may cause us to lose our fourth dimensional um, uh, integrity and so move start to move into a third dimensional visual field that is all but as far as being able to detect third dimension it is very easy for us to go backwards now if we were trying to go to fifth dimension it wouldn't matter fifth dimension we cannot detect as much and it does not appear to us as being um, visual so and also when we move into a uh, third dimension and if we stay in a fourth dimensional uh, density we do we can appear in a building but you wouldn't see us we would meld with it but we choose not to do things of that nature there are sometimes technologies within buildings and places that uh, may set off some of our own technologies. So, like I said, we do detect it and try not to uh, become part of any of your structures. Oh, um, has any, well, uh, I wanted to put out a request to maybe come and visit the, the colonies maybe next week if there, there are any free slots open. There are, there are some uh, slots open and we will uh, definitely bring you next week, probably Thursday. Okay. Wait, one moment. Sengi, kwaka sha frete to wa andivi awa yisi. Yadi abati akralak wa peshuto. No kwa. 
She said Thursday's good. Okay. Continue. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Amran has a question. Amran. Hello, Tukur. Greetings. Thank you for being here. It's nice to speak to you again. It is nice to be here. You needed an update, so that is why I came. Oh, thank you very much. You mean me personally or the whole group? Oh, your people. And oh, okay. you could use information as well. Yes. I have a question regarding the moon. Now, yes. many believe that, many uh, say that the moon is artificially made, Well, which, which is true. But I feel the moon as having a soul of itself, which many believe that it does not have. So can you elaborate on that maybe? That I, I did not understand your question exactly. That if the moon has a soul, or if it is oh, just a soul. soul. I see, and like the Earth has a soul, Mother Gaia. Well, the moon does have its own section of soul. It, the moon has been, is actually not from this area. Well, there's many th different theories. We were not here to see what happened, how the moon actually was made. But according to scientific uh, thought processes, there are two different ways. Some believe it came out of the Earth and started to revolve around the planet. Others believe that it was created and brought here. Now, the moon is hollow and made out of organic materials. So therefore, it, it is a question. It is many millennia, millions of years old, billions actually. but. Our understanding of the moon is that it does have an organic origin, no matter if it came here from somewhere or if it came from the earth itself. There are many species that are inhabiting the moon, especially on the back. They, they have hollowed out some of it so that they can see through and observe the earth. There are several different species behind there, uh, about six basic ones, but uh, also smaller populations of other civilizations as well. So it is well inhabited and has been used as an observatory for quite a while now. Okay, yes, so, okay. Could you tell, um, could you maybe tell who was the creator of the moon and if my energies was also used for the creation of the moon? Well, like I said, there are two theories. The creator of the moon would be that person that either brought it out of the density of your planet or brought it there from another place. It was once thought that your moon was uh, a moon around one of the greater planets, such as Jupiter or Saturn, that was brought here for the intent, uh, ascension, and only for that intention. But I cannot verify that completely. That information is uh, rather scrambled because we have different definitions of how your moon was created. Yes, it is okay. Um, I it have, does have um, some, if you want to study the DNA of Earth and the Moon, there is some DNA from the Earth on the Moon. So, therefore, that is why it comes into question. Because there is also DNA from Saturn and Jupiter on the Moon as well. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. I call it DNA. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much that was it for me thank you very good thank you thank you all right uh, more questions from YouTube live um, 
Uh, Angie, Angie Marias was asking if she is still teaching kids, um, hybrid kids in the astral, and if she has any of her own hybrids. You are still teaching hybrid children. You go to t all three different planets, Polana, Era, and Maya. Mostly Polana at this point because they need more teachers. The areas of hybridization there are growing at an exponential rate. About uh, three quarters of the planet is hybridization uh, population. So it is that they need more teachers there than anywhere else. So yes, you are now going to have a hybrid child, but it is not yet born. Okay, wow. Oh, and it is of Pleiadian origin. I'm not sure if you asked for a certain species, but Pleiadian was the one that was chosen for you. Thank you, Bakur. I'm sure she'll be very happy to hear that. Okay. Um, we have more questions. Uh, Christine? Raposa was asking in regards to our earlier conversation, she just wanted a little more clarification, maybe more insight on um, sending Reiki energy and other types of healing to parts of the world and the U.S. that are struggling to further help increase the light in that area. Correct. I'm not sure what she is asking specifically, but if she has a solenite ball or solenite energy stone this is a long distance stone it sends energy quite easily to any part that is in of the world or universe that is intended there this is what it looks like do you see it yes also yes, selenite isn't there it? are other techniques for sending long distance energy healing your intention is the most necessary part of it. There are those that are attuned to different um, other energies that can send long distance healing to any place in the world. There is one called Guru Dan who can send energy to almost the end of the universe at this point. But he is still growing in his uh, energies, and he is a great healer. There are other great healers out there as well. So do not worry, or do not think that your healing is any less. It will grow greater as you uh, continue to experience it and practice it, and as the fourth dimensional energy opens up on this planet that you live on and makes it a fourth dimensional uh, planet. Okay, yes, awesome, thank you. Um, we have a question from Pete. Pete is wondering if you could give him some insight on, oh, he said, I would like to ask for a device or a gem to assist me for a while to get by from where I'm at. I think he might be traveling. I'm not sure. What is the name of this stone? Um, he. This stone is Lampus. Is that the word no, you use? Lapis. 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 lapis As in lapis lazuli, I believe. Correct. It is a travel stone. Also, there are other stones to help with travel. Intend any of your gemstones for this use as well. They can all be used as protective stones. Remember, your intention and your need will go into the stone. If it is properly charged, it will help you in every situation that is necessary. There are those stones intended for particular things. 
it's best to use those stones for those particular things, but they can be intentioned for other uses. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, Tikur. We have more questions rolling in here. Um, we're getting close to being almost at the 30 minutes left. So wondering if uh, anyone else wanted to pop in today and say hello. Very well. I will let you go for now, normal stay, and much love to you all. There are others waiting to come in. Thank you, Takur. We love you. Namaste. I am sorry for those that did not get their questions answered, but another being may be able to answer them even better. Yeah. I am Ra, once in command of all the earth. Who summons me? Hello, Ra. Greetings. Thank you for joining us. We you have, have called for many of the spirits of the ancient world. What is the use for our information? Uh, we had a few requests for you. So, um, yes, they're rolling in already. Um, Sheer is first. Yes, Sheer, son of Remilak. Hello, Ra. How are Greetings. you? Well, I am fine. The realm that I am in now is not the same as yours. Where are you now? What is it that you need to know? Well, it's been a very long time that I want to speak with you. I know that we have ties together, and I once channeled you. I didn't know even that you were coming. Yes. Can you tell me what about is the your nature question? Of... Yes. Can you tell me about the nature of our connections? Yes. We were both creator beings. Ah, you, me, and Osiris. Yes. Ah, okay. Now I see the connection. It's very good uh, that you're here and that you came here for my request. I'm deeply hon honored by that. I am honored that we have been able to come to you. I say we because I am not alone. In this presence, I am Ra, but there is also other connections with Osiris, Horus, Anubis, and others that you have requested as well. We are here together to speak to you in a way that would be helpful to your of existence. Thank you. I will let uh, others ask their questions. Um, we will speak again. Thank you for coming once again. Much love to you, son of Ramilak. Are you in a connection with my father? Yes. <laughs> I will show sure us. Of course. Continue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Steve, Steve Helms had a question. Hello, Ra. Greetings. Greetings, much love. And love to you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I was just wondering uh, what my connection is with you and uh, of the uh, creation of Earth, uh, along with my Pleiadian side, and also have a new a Nubian DNA as well. I was just wondering what the well, my connection uh, as a whole uh, with you and Anubis and, and the creation of Earth or, or this universe. Thank you. We were friends on other planes at one time, but we met on Earth several times for meetings. You were not from this species called humans at that time, 
but you were here from the Anunnaki species to help with the creation from the very beginning. After this time, we're in astral and with great emphasis on learning about each other in the sense that we had information to share about the universe. This time on the Egyptian soil that you spent was usually in conference with us. Not only myself, but several others. Now, the beginnings of time on this planet were steeped in mysticism in some ways because many take credit for it. But as I can see, the... There are some that will take more credit than others. Anunnaki will take credit in some forms, and those that come from fourth dimensional Atlantis sometimes want to take credit, the Lemurians. There are others like the reptilians who claim first being here and credit for the beginning of all seedings. But it is steeped in mystery how things actually occurred. We believe God had a direct hand in much of the blending in of the thought processes. Sweet, thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome. Thank you. Michelle has a question. Greetings, Ra. Greetings. Um, I have had a number of messages about using the sun's energy, and I feel like that is your energy. Is that correct? Or are I you took just my energy energy from the sun. This is correct. At the time when I was in control of this place. So I have been told I have both. I don't know if that was at the same time as you or an oath. Not. And what does this oath entail? Toth. Toth. T H O T H. Oh. And what about that? Is that correct? It is it is accurate. Oh dear, somebody's okay. There's great echoes. Yeah, there's it's over. So what I wanted to ask about the raw energy is is your energy related to messages? Like do I use is it do I use is it important that I use this Egyptian energy or study this Egyptian energy for healing purposes? Your energy does come from the sun and can be uh, sporadic mm -hmm. and erratic because <laughs> the sun changes in its uh, density in your realm. Sometimes it is very strong and other times it is very weak. Mm -hmm. See, to draw on sun's energy for all things. But you must also draw on spiritual energy as well, which is other than the sun. Not that the sun is not spiritual energy, but there are other energies for you to draw on to balance out in these times of, of erraticism. Actually, I really do more so connect with um, angelic energy on a pretty daily basis. Yes, um, angelic energy is spiritual energy, but you have not yet learned how to use it completely properly. That is what they are training you, and that is why you are spending so much time in their presence. Mm -hmm. They are teaching you more of who they are and how to be like them. This will cause you to be balanced and grounded. That would be a different thing. <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to tell me? Um, need to know about using your tapping into 
sun energy or oh, otherwise. Yeah. Your connections will be universal. You can use any kind of energies that you wish, but please be mindful of other humans' energies because you have a tendency to use them also. Do not use them as much as all the other ones. You mean human beings' energies? Human energies. I use human energies. Subconsciously, but you are a great being and you do not know why you are, are experiencing all the things that you experience. And it is because you are in many realms at once sometimes. And there are things that need to be explained about this time period of transition that you do not understand. Yes, there are so many things I do not understand, like where six of my days went in the last two weeks. Okay, I'm just yes. going to let, time is limited, so I'm going to let someone else come. Thank you for um, coming and the info. Much love to you. There is so much more for you to learn. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we move forward with more questions, um, somebody did bring this up and I was thinking the same. Ra, if you have any message for humanity at large that you would like to convey right now, please let us know. In the, in the time when I was in control, there were many things that I had to do. The earth is under your own control control of human beings and therefore use your best judgment when making decisions at all times for your decisions be they small or you may think insignificant insignificant are very important in the shaping of the future remember that all people on your planet have free will and when making decisions, it may seem small, but these decisions go into the greatest of all things. And the universe will decide how you are moving forward according to these thoughts and these different decisions that are made. In great positivity when doing so, so that you may enlighten the world and bring it closer to the ascension that you want to achieve and not farther away control your anger so that it is only justified and does not last for a great period of time for when anger is stretched out it does pollute the system with anger and energy that is not necessary for the world you would rather want more of a positive energy to reign through at this time in your existence so that it may be part of your goodwill to see things happen in a greater and more manner for positivity. It is moving along rather well, but there are still many that are angry and misguided. Remember to help with that. Do not return evil for evil. But if someone is angry, try to bring them into a positive state. You returning the anger will not help the atmosphere or the situation. It will disintegrate and the chaos will go off into the atmosphere and become chaos in somebody else's time period as well. Remember, all the things that you are, are all, all the things that are in the universe. And when you stimulate one of those things, such as anger or hate, you stimulate it in many places. But when you stimulate love and calmness and peace, spirituality, you also stimulate that in many places. Bring forth the greater of the stimulations for your peoples 
and for your time. It is a time when you must rule, and this, this time is important, for you will become telepathic, and then that will change the planet as a whole. Thank you, Ra. We are getting closer to becoming telepathic. <laughs> Teleempathic. Can I qu ask a question to Ra? Yes. Hello, Ra. I hope you remember Greetings, me, Ra. who I am. What did Do you say? You, I hope you remember me, I said. I remember you. <laughs> You have used the name Omron more than once. Oh. Well, we have had connections in Egypt and... Absolutely. A lot of them, actually. So... Absolutely. So and what is your question, or if there is one? Yes. Is there any message from you? Anything you want to tell me? Because I yeah. know Ed, that, I'm, that I may also be a part of your collective. Yes. The, need, the information you need for this planet is this, that you are coming along gradually and steadily, and that you must not get ahead of yourself. You must stay in line with what is happening and move one step at a time. Because if you miss a step, this could mean missing understanding and be able to not connect or cause a disconnect with something that you need to know very much. So therefore, stay in your steady movement forward, for you are a great man, and you need to stay within all the steps of information and cannot take a step outward, because if you do, it will change your course. Yes, thank you very much for the wise words. And you already know these things. But it is confirmation for you that you will rise up if you stay within the steps that need to be taken. Yes, that is true. Could you, last question, could you tell me something I don't know about our connections in Egypt? Yes. Hmm. You are my confidant. I would tell you things that I did not tell others because you could be trusted. Uh huh. Yes, I understand that. And therefore, that is all I will say at this time. Yes, let's keep it secret. <laughs> it is no longer a secret. No. But what I told you was. Yes, thank you very much. That was it for me. And I hope I see you in future. You will see me again. And you can be me, become my teacher maybe once again. Teachers are valuable. Thank you. OK. Um, Kralik was asking if you would elaborate, Ra, on losing control of Earth, as he put it. I did not lose control. I gave it up. Uh, my time was done. The things that I needed to accomplish were finished. Those that were my colleagues in this particular portion of time and space were with me to do the job that needed to be done. The enlightenment of the human race from this particular standpoint of the Egyptian culture has been done, but there will be more enlightenment to come, and they will find that we were even greater than they once thought, and that we were probably the center of the universe at one time as far as advanced thought. We were bringing great communities of thought together to make a place of eternal gratitude to God. Uh, hello, Ra. <clears throat> yes. 
this is a yeah this is Krillek. uh i wanted to ask about anubis if he was either a canine or an avian person avian okay thank you you're welcome okay thank you wow um all right oh yes there is a question within the room well, I wanted to ask if come closer. They cannot hear you. I wanted to ask if there is a connection between you and I. Of course, you already know the answer to that. Right, but Be because of Osiris, there is a great connection. Because of the things that you are doing in this time, there is a great connection energetically still, and there will be a continued forward mo movement with my energy on this planet because I can interject it when it's needed and when it's asked for. Does that answer your question? Was I there in your time as well? You were here. You were there. Depending on the choosing of the now, I can make it here or there. But yes, you were among those that were with me. That's all. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Um, somebody was asking on YouTube Live um, if this is the same raw consciousness that had channeled the book, The Law of One. I'm assuming yes. And yes. And okay. why would they do um, that? That's a that's a good question. I just um, I guess I wanted to ask um, if there's anything about the law of one because some people have looked into it. Um, is there anything you would convey at this time right now regarding the law of one? Is all of that information still? Um, up to date, so to speak? It is in the sense that it is useful to this day and age. They must look at the information and bring it into a personal use. So therefore, when they read about the Law of One, it becomes a personal thought process. If I were to give information about the Law of One, it would go out and scatter. I would prefer they become connected with the information so that they can use it within their own psyche and intellect, their own spiritual uh, realm, because that is the way that it is supposed to be used. Now, they may speak their understanding of it, uses of it, and uh, applications of it to others, but unless they read the actual law of one, it will not mean the same thing. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, all right, Michelle has a question about the Law of One. Hi, Ra. So yes. when, as I was uh, reading through the material, I noticed there's lots of really nitpicky rules in the Law of One and also like some it felt like a lot of uh, kind of like, if you don't do this, then this is. That uh, is your perception of it? <laughs> it is my perception of it. Because um, once you understand the law of one, the rules of the law of one are then become integrated in who you are and you do not have to think of them as rules. They become who you are, and you become the law of one in your own personage. Um. So if you do not do this, if you do not do that, does that resonate with you? The resonation yeah. of the law of one is most important. Well, I mean, some of the information I resonated with and others of it felt like, um, you know, the fundamentalist Baptist. Just telling me if you don't do this then God doesn't love you kind of you know what I mean 
That is like, not the way it was intended. Punitive. That was not as it is intended. Okay. All right. There is no hatred or behavioral, uh, no, no punishment. So would you recommend that all of us in this group read this material and try to um, practice its principles in our affairs? Practice the principles that relate to yourself. If you do not agree with it, mm -hmm. then it is not part of who yourself should be. I see. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Lila has a question. Hi, Ra. Here are my questions. I have many lives in Egypt and I would like to know my connection with you and Horus. Yes, you are with us, you were there at that time, and your connection was strong. You were not exactly with us all the time, but you were a great visitor to our time and part of the council, just like others have been. Remember, we were creating something unusual and different. It was a place where we could unite and become one with God but also to spread the thought processes of the universe to a greater realm. Not only the realm of our universe, but the different dimensions that existed. And we were able to move within these. This was part of your connection. And what is with, with Horus? Because I feel like strong feelings for Horus. Yes, you and Horus were very close. I do not know your exact re relationship, but I do know you were very close. Okay, then is the uh, the last question. Uh, what is my connection with uh, uh, Xenia? She's in the chat right now, I think, or she was. Her name is. You have had many past lives together. In what, in what form? Family. In fact, you were lovers in 1100 years ago. You were relatives many times, good friends at few times, and were with each other in other species as well. Was she in the Egypt in the same time I, uh, when, I, when I was? In, in the what? In the Egyptian times, was she also reincarnated in that time? Yes. However, you weren't as close at that period right. as you were in other lifetimes. You know, it looks like that in this uh, chat, in this colony, we a lot of people are connected to you. So it looks like it's, it's, it's amazing things. I'm so nervous because we all love you and know you. It is like reunited with you in this chat it is just very emotional for me yes thank you Be well. and i do love you and i love my people and we were with each other many times it is not a mistake or not an error group has come together at this day and age it is significant and very powerful I must go at this time. But Horus, yes. Anubis, Isis, Osiris, Set, I'll greet you. They are here with me. Presence. Thank you all for joining today. It has been a pleasure. With love, we grant you this day of peace. Feel the energies of God. Know that he is with you and your ascensions. 
be of great cheer and bring positivity to your world. Leaders, I speak to you now. Do not follow when you can lead. I am I am here from Palana of Hybrid's place. They allow me to come. Hello, what is your name? Toka. Toka. No. Tukra. Tukra. Thank you for joining us, Tukra. You how talk you? about hybrids. Yes. I am one. Yes. We are of a great many on Palana. Many hundreds of us live there and are enjoying a new kind of experience. There are many different looks and cultures here, and they are all blending into one great, beautiful, spiritual colony. I just come to say hello. And thank you for being part of who we are. We well, have our parents with us, but we know that some of you are also part of parenthood with us. Yes. Excuse yes. me, I do not speak very well. Oh, you are fine. Uh, it's so exciting to speak with you. Um, uh, a little you... nervous. Oh, you call it nervous. Don't be nervous. nervous. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, where, where I would be interested to hear what what is your line? What is your lineage? Um, what are you a hybrid of? I am a Lyran hybrid. Oh. Am proud of my culture, my species, my lineage, but there it is changing. As a hybrid, I am not bound to feel all Lyran but I can also feel human, and I can also feel the feelings of other species because I understand that they are not fully their species as well. It makes it easier to stand or want to understand their cultures. Yes, I understand that strongly. So that is I very am now a hybrid who understands Yu Yil culture, Pleiadian culture, Lyran culture, human culture and Syrian culture, which are fairly close to one another in some ways. 
but there are many children and parents here that are becoming closer in their understanding of life in general and not so specifically one species. This That's is what I wanted to say to the humans is you are much like we are. You are hybrids also, but your culture has developed many different cultures. And one day you will develop a universal culture that will speak of who you are internally and not from the distant past, but in the present, you will know who you are and what is right and wrong. And you will meet us as your children or other species and know that we are part of who you are and we will be able to speak to you as equals just like we speak to each other here. It is so beautiful and rewarding to know that even though I am more Lyran looking than human, that I fit into the society of all those that are different than myself. It is truly beautiful. That is all I wanted to say. Would we be able to know how old you are in Earth year? Eleven. Aww. In Earth years, yes. Thing to do. Eleven is much older here than it is there, but I am still nervous because I do not know all your cultures and languages as well as I would like. And I know that I am speaking to many cultures at once. Yes, and you're doing wonderfully. Um, I apologize, my internet was a little choppy there. Um, but uh, what, is there anything you, you could say to us in your language? That was, it is fun to be here, but it is hard to speak to people and help them all to understand me. Oh, thank you. You're doing wonderfully. Okay, one last question, and then I'll let you go. Um, could you tell us one of your favorite activities, something that you love to do? Oh, yes. Um, holographic chases, where... <laughs> Oh, let me tell Can you what elaborate? that is. I guess you don't know that. It is a game in a large area where holographic things will appear, and you must get to them before they disappear. Otherwise, you do not possess it. And the object is of the game is to possess all the pieces to put together the puzzle at the end. So the holographic appearance will happen more than once but the other part of the game is to put it together faster than anybody else wow that sounds so cool <laughs> that is awesome okay all right i gotta let you go we do have to close out for today tukra pleasure speaking with you thank you for stopping by i hope to visit you someday I love you, and I wish you the best. Yeehaw. 
Wuha. Hello. Hi, Jim. Hey, how are you? Wonderful. Welcome back. Thank you. That was a fun surprise at the end. Oh, the hybrid child. Yeah. Yes. I think it was That's a girl. I think so, too. I definitely felt feminine energy. So was, um, I think it was a girl, though. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was super cool to speak with her. And she was on pin. Oh, God. I'm going to forget it now. The Polana. Oh, Polana. The last fiber planet. She was on Polana. I can hear that. I think she's frozen. Yes, Polana. Polana. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Wow, that was cool. We have to wrap up. I know you have to go, Jim. Um, we're just going to do one blessing. Um, and then close out, uh, Johannes said that he had a blessing for us. Wonderful. Thank you, Johannes. Nanana <laughs> Kia waria na naia wa, shia kasi shia waria ni taya hia saya wani. This day has brought energy to your planet. I beg you all to ground yourself and do not let the earth energies or the other energies that are coming to earth bother you or make you out of sorts but to ground yourself into Mother Earth so you may be one with all these energies. Feel free to be joyful. Feel free to connect to all the things that are pleasurable to you. And do not let outside things interfere with your joy or your mission. Rise up and be who you are and ground into this beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Jim. That was beautiful. Another awesome webinar. I apologize again to everybody in the beginning for the tech issues. Hopefully that's not going to happen again. We will still be hosting on Hukalo 2 for future events. Check out our website, humancolony.org. And with that said, I think we're going to wrap up. So thank you, everybody, for joining. We love you. Take care. Love you. Namaste. Namaste. Oh.